Hi, we're here at the Cable Show with Dan Simpkins, who's the CEO of Hillcrest. And Hillcrest is a company that uh, has been a pioneer in motion cursor utilizations for televisions and now some other products and in the uh, CE space and also has brought that technology to the cable industry. Um, I guess some time ago when you introduced this, this was so new and so strange that people didn't quite know what to make of it, but now we've seen motion control through things like the Wii uh, coming into play everywhere and it's, it's not so strange anymore. Um, tell us a little bit about how your technology works um, and, and what distinguishes it uh, as, as far as it applies to things like television. Absolutely. Um, well, thanks for having me, uh, Fred. I, um, as I mentioned to you earlier, motion is really a natural and intuitive way for humans to interact. Um, I, you know, a number of years ago, we conceived of the idea of using natural motion to control television. The um, idea behind motion is to take a device and install inside of it motion sensors like accelerometers and gyroscopes, um, and then through complex software and processing, convert that motion, the natural motion that the human makes, into something usable by the platform itself. Um, our original vision was to take natural motion and really move television away from the 50 button up, down, left, right paradigm, which we believe was very constraining in this world of millions of content choices um, and take um, that platform into the future using a more instinctive um, a human motion or, or essentially a pointing paradigm. Now what's really interesting is humans learn to point really before we even learn to speak and we learn to point for selection um, and to indicate preferences and so that was the vision. It's still the main means of communicating here in Washington, right? It, it certainly <laughs> is. We point at each other a lot, don't we? Too much, I think. So what we wanted to do is build a platform that would allow people to showcase how pointing would work. Um, in the beginning, in the early years um, of our uh, existence, we built an entire end-to-end -end platform, a software and hardware platform. Um, starting in 2008, we decided to focus our business on motion and motion technology. Motion is particularly hard uh, to do well, and we, um, we're confident that Hillcrest's free space technology is the best motion sensing uh, technology out there. The idea is, as we move to pointing interfaces across the entire consumer electronic spectrum. You mentioned the Wii, it first started with gaming uh, platforms um, and then moved into smartphones and we know that the smartphone is a pointing interface. We use touch uh, for that and then into tablets. Um, the next frontier is to use that technology uh, for the television. In 2009, LG, um, in uh, partnership with Hillcrest, decided to move their smart TV platform forward and use this idea of a cursor-based control uh, to manage their smart TV uh, service. Now when they did that, did, did they then innovate a very different user interface from what they had been doing? In other words, is it intrinsic to the motion technology that people are, are, are doing creative things on user interfaces that they weren't doing before? Yes, it's very important to see what kind of transformation was made. The up, down, left, right uh, interface, which is really a focus state interface, really at any given point only has four places to go. You can go up, down, right, or left. With a cursor, you can go anywhere. So essentially every pixel on the screen can now be an active pixel. And if you think about the interface that you have on your PC or on your tablet, you don't really feel constrained by that interface. And what was most important is that the application writers could design a wide range of applications. Uh -huh. So a Netflix interface could be different than a YouTube interface, could be different than a Voodoo interface, could be different than a Comcast Xfinity interface. And it allowed a lot of flexibility. In the first phases, what LG did was allow the interface to support both up, down, left, right, and pointing. 
um, in order to enable there to be a stepping stone, uh -huh. essentially the putting their toe ways. in the water. And uh, we still see some of that. In the latest generations of the LG TV, you can still support up, down, left, right interfaces, but more and more those applications are moving to pointing, and you're seeing much richer and more exciting uh, capabilities there in now, the application. Now, do you see as a function of the fact that they're operating in IP and they're going, you know, using that technology as, as the front end on what they do without the interpretation of all the processes in a set-top box, that they're able to get to some of those advanced functionalities faster, or doesn't it make a difference? You know, um, it doesn't really make a difference. I mean, the uh, cable infrastructure today has more than enough horsepower and processing to support these kinds of next-generation interfaces. And of course, um, we're already starting to see some of that. What's really exciting here is that with Comcast's introduction of the RDK, a, an open platform for the development of next generation um, cable services and cable applications, um, we're really excited about that because that enables us to bring motion into that um, market space. And we're showing here at the show a set-top, an early implementation of a set-top, one that um, was developed uh, in partnership with Intel. It's a reference platform that actually has a, an RDK software stack running on it and the Hillcrest Free Space technology um, incorporated. So what we're doing for the first time is showing that a, an IP set-top or ultimately a traditional cable set-top has the capability of implementing a motion interface and motion software. So all the work goes around, you've got the technology, uh, the middleware suppliers have, have that side of it, it's, it's getting the two to work together. How, how do you go about doing that? Is that being facilitated through the cable operator or directly, are you doing it through the OEMs or both? Before I talk about that, I want to actually jump back to a point you said earlier okay. and then we'll go forward. One of the beauties of putting a motion interface on the television is opening up the type of applications that right. you can run. So one of the areas that we think is very exciting are casual games on TV. And of course, the traditional remote control is only limited in what kinds of applications like games you can implement. Uh -huh. We see now applications on smartphones and tablets that are being introduced by the cable operators as an exciting transformation because those are now guides that are essentially pointing control. So one of the most important parts of this transformation is to get the operators to recognize the power of this new kind of interaction, an interaction based on pointing and motion. So it's, it's not and just about making a better navigation experience, it's actually the opportunity to introduce new services, new, new benefits to the consumer. Exactly, and new benefits to the consumer and the operators as well. Uh -huh. So here are now going to be new um, new mechanisms for them to offer services which ultimately will be profitable for the operator. So that leads into your question, which is who's involved in this? Well, clearly the operators control the user experience. They control their, they own their customers and they want to continue to do that. And it's important then that they embrace this new technology. The middleware providers provide the software and the linkage into the, um, the, the interaction, if you will. Uh, the human computer interaction. So the way the user will operate the platform is controlled by that middleware, that's the software. But what, where Hillcrest comes in is we build a motion stack called Motion Engine, which is the processing that takes the output of these motion sensors and then brings it into the middleware and turns it into something useful, essentially a cursor or an API for gaming. And so um, the one partner I haven't mentioned is the remote control maker themselves. They have to make a remote with a motion sensor and do that properly. So what Hillcrest is doing now is facilitating partnerships between the remote control makers, the middleware makers, and the operators, of course, and with Hillcrest in the center to ultimately bring this new paradigm to the market. And, and in, in so doing, I guess the, the driver is having a, an operator or operator customers who are saying, we want this and then bringing that ecosystem group together and saying, work with these guys, make this happen. Exactly. Is that and happening? 
That is actually happening, and with our recent announcement of, of joining the RDK, Hillcrest was the first motion supplier to join the RDK. Comcast has been a great supporter of that process, and they've been um, helping facilitate because they want to see these new experiences brought into the world of cable. They recognize that the world is moving forward, that with uh, new technologies in mobile and in tablets, it's important for cable to keep pace. And so, so maybe in the next cable show, we'll be seeing some demonstrations of uh, Back to the Future, some of those incredible uh, navigation systems that you guys were showing back when. Uh, time will tell. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, being back in the world of cable for years to come. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, Dan, for taking the time. Thank you, Fred. Appreciate it.